Hello Adobe Muse designers. This is uh, Russell over here at Doodaddle Widget Works. Today I'm going to give you a tip of the month or a hack of the month I should say. Um, and it's in regards to getting video in your mobile designs. Um, more specifically um, video backgrounds that don't require user interaction. And so let's go ahead and get started. Um, there's two separate ways you could actually do this. Um, one is by using animated GIF file, um, which will accomplish the feat, but it has its limitations. Um, the limitations being that it doesn't have the full color gamut as like such as a JPEG or uh, PNG files. Um, but there's still a way to get a video file that is JPEG or um, PNG. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. Um, it's using um, Twisty 360 Pro and you can um, download that at uh, www.doodaddle.com and um, easily find the widget there. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm going to show you the Adobe Muse website as well. This is going to be a hands-on tutorial kind of uh, video, so I'll kind of go through the whole entire process from start to finish, so you can kind of get a good idea of how it works. In this white area is where I'm going to want a video background. I kind of want it subtle. It's a business page, so it can't be too much over the top. So these are some of my inspiration videos that I kind of was looking at for that space. and. I've kind of narrowed it down to two, this one here or this one here. Since I didn't want it to overpower the page, I kind of went with the grayscale computer one here. Let's go ahead and open up Media Encoder. Since Twisty360 Pro is not a video player, it needs to take an image sequence. And you can easily break down um, a video into a sequence of images. So you'd want to open up a, a Media Encoder. Adobe Media Encoder, and then you're going to want to drag and drop your video into the work screen. The first thing you're going to want to change is this H264, and we're going to change that to a JPEG. You could use PNG as well. It'll sequence the mount either for those two file formats, but we want JPEG. Um, the reason I'm choosing JPEG over a PNG is that the file sizes are usually much smaller. And since it's a background video, I'm going to kind of crunch it as much as I can um, to save uh, disk space and download times. So I'm going to crunch this quality down quite a bit. And I'm also going to change the width and height. Um, knowing how I'm using this and various breakpoints, um, I want my video to kind of be a square shape. At least it, it works better for the design that I have here. So. I'm going to bring this down to 1200. Ooh, 1200. And normally you have this link on, and I uncheck this so I can kind of change my other aspect ratio. I'm going to do 900 for the height. Now I'm going to go to this source scaling, and I'm going to scale the film just because I want more of a square shape, so I have more area to work with because when Muse um, shrinks the page or when the user shrinks the page in a responsive design this um, image is going to creep up and you'll see that here in just a moment. So now that we have the video kind of cropped down a little bit and this video um, is a looping video so it'll, um, it'll continuously play and it's only 12 seconds long but we have to do um, a few things. We're going to make sure export as sequence is on and we're going to take our frame rate. This is going to be the important one because uh, Twisty360 Pro only allows you to have 99 images so to get away with that we have to reduce how many images we get per second for our video. Um, if we did 10 we'd have 121 images and it would be too many for to a C360 Pro, so we need to reduce it even further. And 8 should suffice. The next thing I'm going to do is kind of scrub through my video and make sure there are no black frames at the beginning or the end. 
And if there is, you're just going to want to take one of these trim points and pull it in a little bit, either on the front or the back. Okay, now that we've done all that, we've got our frame rate set, we have to change our file name and create a folder so they'll all drop in. There's going to be quite a few images, so you're going to want to um, contain them in a folder. So we're going to go new folder. I'm going to say test. And I'm going to change the file name. And I'm going to tell you to put this in all lowercase. Um, and I'll get to the reasoning why here in just a few minutes. Let's say computer. And I'm going to click save. Now that we've done that, we can click OK, and we can click the Start icon here. And this is going to sequence our video for us. Now that that's done, I'm just going to minimize this. We're going to go to our test window. And you'll notice it does some things automatically for you. Kind of similar to what uh, Twisty360 Pro is going to do um, for your images as well. So you have uh, the computer 00.jpg is your file name, your full file name. If you are utilizing Twisty360 Pro, the thing you're going to want to know is that the 00 and the .jpg is going to be automatically populated by the widget, by the settings you choose in the widget. So the, when it asks you for the file name, you're not going to want to include this highlighted area here you're going to want to just include what's not highlighted, which is computer here. That being said, we have to look at how many images we have in total, and there's 98 of them, and that is great. So we'll go ahead and get started. The next step is to import the actual images, and I always use uh, Add Files to Upload because this will um, put them in the proper folder for Twisty360 Pro on your host. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, desktop. Our test folder. And here they are. We're just going to select all of them and then click Open. And before I even drag out Twisty360 Pro, I'm going to actually upload this to the host. So let's go ahead and do that now. should take just a few minutes. You can kind of see the, the numbers are kind of rolling up there, so then they're all going on. And you can even see the folder that it's actually being loaded into, which is the assets folder, which is how Twisty360 is built. So, And if you downloaded Twisty360, um, it will be in your library um, folders. And just type in twisty, and there it is. <clears throat> you might, may be wondering why this uh, eyeball is here, because that's loaded on the host already. The images are located under doodaddle.com, and um, that's why you can view this on the screen. And since we've already uploaded our images, our images should be there too. So let's go ahead and put in our server. Oops. Uh, let's see. VI test, I think. And you're going to want to use a forward slash. See, now this is in a subdirectory. Um, a lot of people have questions with this. Um, if you're not publishing directly onto the host, which would be uh, rustice.net, and you're publishing in, a, in, a, in another folder or a subfolder, you're going to want to include those so, subfolders. And in this case, I have this web page residing in the assets folder under VI test. And it just has to have that forward slash. If you don't have that in there, it's going to break the actual string to the images and it won't work for you. So next we're going to go is into the image files. First thing we tackle is the, the file name. And let me just pop open this window real quick to show you. The reason now I'm going to kind of describe why I chose all lowercase. When you use add files to upload within Adobe Muse, 
even if this had a capital letter in it, it would make everything lowercase when you upload. That being said, if you add in your file name here and say you used a capital C for computer, it would not know where your, your computer images are. So that's why I usually just recommend to people that they use all lowercase no matter what. It just makes things a lot easier when you're working in the web. So, and in this case, we're going to change this back to lowercase c. And I'm just putting computer, and I kind of walked you through that a minute ago because the 00, zero and the dot jpgs are all going to be automatically populated by the settings we choose. So everything before those, this right here is what we need. Everything else is getting auto-populated. So now that we have that, we have computer, we need to tell it how many files we have. We have 98 and the type of file, so JPEG. So this is going to, this is the automatic scripting that uh, tells us that there are 100 images or 98 images and um, this is the type of file it is. So now with this piece, the file name, the number, and then the JPEG, it'll make a complete string for the URL. And if the images were uploaded to a host, then you'll see them populate automatically in your widget, which it did. So the next thing we need to do is make this 100% width for the background. So we're going to slide this guy up here. <clears throat> and the reason I'm not just uh, clicking the resize, here let me show you. The reason I'm not going to click this resize is if I did this, it pushes a lot of the elements down. So I'm going to scale it out as far as I can go and then I'll choose that icon. So I'm just going to go all the way to the full width. It'll resize itself, that's fine. I'm going to just hit none and then I'm going to hit stretch to browser just to make sure that it's on. And obviously we're going to need to send this to the back. <clears throat> which is exactly what we wanted to do. And I also said I wanted to kind of lighten it up. It's a little dark there, so I'm just going to change our opacity level and I'm going to bring that down. I don't know if 30 is too light, but we'll find out. And as I was saying, as you compress the page size, this video is going to start reducing in size in the upward motion. Um, that's automatically done through Muse. Um, and you don't really have a ton of control over that. So, key is to kind of position your video. Here, let me bring this back to 100% so we can see it easier. And then we'll adjust the... That looks good. So that... It is about where I want it. So we're floating in the background, but there's some bleeding that's going on behind the navigation and underneath these um, icons and stuff. So let's go ahead and look at our next breakpoint. And this is going to be the same thing. We're just going to scroll this all the way out to the edge. width our next one now you can kind of see why I did a square squarish type if I just had a rectangle this video is only going to kind of go and fill up half of this information which is not really what I wanted so hopefully we have enough at this point since I'm hoping yeah we might have to we might have to trim it a little bit more, or we may have to adjust this design and pull up some items here to make it work just right. So and we do want this to full breath. And same thing here.
go away. Perfect. So some of the other settings within the Twisty 360 I'll have you take a look at now. Um, now that we have everything to full width. Our play is going to be continual play because we want it to loop. Um, animation speed. I know the the tooltip here tells you that um, normal speed is equal to one, and in most cases that's that is correct. But uh, since this is video and there's more frames per second in a video, um, you're going to reduce this even by much more than one. So we're going to actually do point one, and that hopefully that will get us to about a normal speed. If it's going too slow, you can um, increase this, or if it's going too fast, you can decrease it. So point one right now. And we're going to want to have loop 360 degrees. I know it doesn't sound like it's right, but we want the looping function, which is perfect. And if you wanted a loading indicator at the bottom, and that's just a little black bar, a thin black bar that kind of, as your page loads in the background, you'll see it kind of fill. Um, and that would be distracting, so I'm going to take that off. If I had a custom cursor and I wanted to utilize one, um, I could add it here. And it could be a JPEG, PNG, whatever. Um, this last piece is um, for certain hosts, um, linking to remote JavaScript can be an issue. So um, you have an option to have it automatically link to um, a remote JavaScript or you can embed it right into your um, into your design. And in this situation, my host works just fine without it. So, <clears throat> so in this situation, you probably would remove um, this hand, and let's go ahead and do that and scoot everything up. if you wanted to continue to have that. We could even so I'm going to do it that way and then we'll probably have to do the same here because oops Let's... I didn't do it for the breakpoint, I just deleted it. That would not be good. Just hide this in the breakpoint, grab that, drag her up, and bring this back down. Perfect. So we'll look at this one here and see if we can kind of crop it up a little bit. Yeah, we probably can. I'm going to leave that there, and I'm going to drag this guy up. No, I could drag this guy this way. This will allow me to kind of scrunch things up a little bit higher than I want, which is good. The more bleed you can have here at the bottom, the better off it will work because as you're shrinking this breakpoint, the video is going to crop up from the bottom. So let me see here. This is justified to the center. Let me justify this to the right. And then we'll look at our next breakpoint. All right. So everything looks kind of in order to where I want it to be. I do want to lighten this up quite a bit because um, it's kind of interfering with the readability of revenue here. So we'll change this down to 58. And let's go ahead and upload host. I could preview this to browser at this point, but I'm just going to upload it to the host for you. should only take a second.
So now uh, you can see, and uh, this isn't the widest breakpoint, but it's exactly kind of what I wanted. A kind of a abstract video background that kind of gives you the um, hint of something going on in the background. So that looks good. And let's crunch it to a different breakpoint size. Now, since this is not a, a video and it's actually images, this will load on a mobile device. It'll mo load up on a tablet without any issue whatsoever. You won't have to hit play. It won't open up in a new screen. It'll stay right on your website. And it's um, kind of something that I hear a lot of different people asking about how it can be done. Well, this is a, one of those options. So um, feel free come by the website. Uh, it's www.doodaddle.com and you can um, download Twisty360 Pro and that will give you everything you need to accomplish what you're looking for. Have a great day and uh, talk to you soon. Bye.